Hi, welcome to Mr. Techpathy Tutorials. This is part 17 of Linux device drivers. In this session, we'll learn about following topics. First, I'll clarify why we are learning Linux linked lists in middle of Linux device driver programming sessions. Then we'll discuss about traversing Linux linked lists. As you know, we are discussing about character device driver programming till Linux device driver part 15. I would like to clarify why we took sudden deviation to learn Linux linked list implementation. Though discussing about Linux linked list implementation looks like a deviation now, I feel it's very much necessary at this moment because the driver code which we are going to discuss in future will be using linked list macros. Without knowing these macros and concepts of Linux linked list, it would be difficult to make sessions more interesting. I like my readers to understand coding sessions well rather than skipping them. So remember, we are going to quickly wind up the Linux linked list implementation and jump back again to the character device driver programming. Let me tell you a way to overcome coding fear and make it more interesting. If you don't understand the code, try to break the huge code into small code snippets, analyze them, add some debugs to them and try to run them. I'm sure you will find it more interesting than going through a huge code at a time. Let's jump to our second topic, traversing Linux linked list. Always remember that the linked lists are just containers that hold your data along with the structure list entry which contains previous and next pointers. To make it more easy, kernel programmers have provided us a very nice interface for traversing linked lists and referring the data structures that include them. To traverse a linked list, we just need to follow the previous and next pointers. This is the macro which we need to use to traverse the linked list. This macro name is list for each with two parameters. This is the prototype of this macro. This macro takes two parameters, both are listed structures. First parameter is a temporary variable of type list underscore head, which will hold the current value of the list. For each iteration of loop, the first parameter points to the next entry in the list until each entry has been visited. We'll be discussing about the loop soon. The second parameter is again a variable of type list underscore head, but this is the head node of the list which has to be traversed. Let's take our to-do thing structure which we used in Linux device driver part 16. This structure contains a list of type list underscore head structure and a variable priority. I have not considered any other driver specific data for time being. Now imagine the Linux doubly linked list which we are going to form will have a six entries of the structure. I have drawn a Linux circular doubly linked list of to-do list structure which contains these six entries. It also holds the list which carries previous and next pointers allowing us to manipulate the entry in the linked list as per our needs. As you can see, the priority values of each entry in the doubly linked list are 12, 9, 7, 5, 3 and 1. Say we are given a new entry to add with priority 4 and we should add it to the list in descending priority order of the list. How do we do it? Let's see how do we do it. So we have a new node to insert with priority value 4 in it. We also need to make sure that the priority value should be in descending priority of the list. To do this task, certainly we need to traverse through to-do list. Always remember, traversing is nothing but moving through the list. We start traversing from the first node which has priority value of 12. We compare this value with the new node priority which is 4. We take the value 12 and compare it with the value priority 4. Is 12 less than 4? No, it's not. Then we traverse to the next entry and we check if 9 is less than 4. No, it's not. Now you know the rest of the drill. Then we check if 7 is less than 4. No, it's not. Again we check if 5 is less than 4. Certainly, it's not. Now we traverse to the next node and check if 3 is less than 4. Yes, 3 is less than 4. So we need to insert the new node 4 right before the node with priority 3. After inserting 4 before 3, we have a list with priorities 12, 9, 7, 5, 4, 3 and 1. This way, we traverse through the list and add the new node in descending order of priority list. Keeping this in mind, let's see how we implement the code in Linux to traverse linked list. A function to perform this task would look like this. Let's go line by line and understand this code snippet. Here we have defined a function with name todo underscore add underscore entry with a single input parameter, which is a new pointer of type todo underscore structure. 
right after entering the functions, we declare a local pointer of type list underscore head structure. We also declare a local pointer entry of type to do underscore structure. We'll be using these local variables in below code. Let's see how and when they are used. We run a for loop starting from the first node of to do list till the end of the to do list. Also at the end of the loop, you find PTR is assigned with pointer next. PTR next points to the next node. Now we use list underscore entry macro to fetch a PTR to to do list of type to do underscore structure. If you take our actual to do underscore structure, its first field is list. So this call to list underscore entry macro will return the address of list in the current to do structure. Now we have the address of first entry node in to do list. We'll take the priority field and compare it with the new priority value. Once the condition is true, we add new node right before the entry node using list underscore add underscore tail macro and we'll return. Otherwise, we continue the loop which allows us to move to the next node and repeat the same comparison check till the end of the list. This else condition is not required here. I have added to explain the logic. So what is the significance of this last line list underscore add underscore tail after completing the loop? Say we have not found the node in to do list which has priority less than new node. Then we need to add this new node at the end of the list after completing the for loop. If you miss this line, your code may fail in worst case scenarios. This is the way we implement the traversing mechanism in the linked list. Also, there is an optimized way to do it. To make it more comfortable, kernel programmers have introduced a new macro called list underscore for underscore each, which is predefined macro for creating loops that iterates through list. The previous logic of traversing Linux linked list could be coded as below. The logic here is same as previous logic, except we have introduced a new macro list underscore for underscore each instead of for loop. When we started this session, we discussed about list underscore for underscore each and its parameters in brief. Let's discuss this in detail now. This macro creates a for loop that executes once with the cursor pointing at successive entry in the list. So this way, using the list for each macro, we can traverse through the linked list in forward direction. What if, if we want to traverse the list in backward direction? Kernel programmers are generous. They have provided us list underscore for underscore each underscore previous macro. This is the prototype of this macro. This function does the same operation as list for each macro, but in opposite direction. We'll be discussing more about different variants of list for each macros in next session. Thanks for watching this video.